The first thing we need to cover are the minimum requirements for the computer. You'll need a computer with a processor of at least 233 MHz, and the computer should have more than 64 megabytes of RAM. Microsoft recommends a gig and a half of hard disk space, although the footprint of Windows XP is much smaller. You'll need a VGA card, and it's recommended that you'll have a CD-ROM or DVD drive available. You'll also need a keyboard and mouse to get around the operating system. If you want to take a look at the details regarding the system requirements, just click on this link shown in this slide. Okay, for this demonstration, we'll be installing Windows XP using Microsoft Virtual PC. Um, the steps for installing Windows XP is identical regardless if it's a virtual or a physical uh, system. So let's go ahead and begin by launching the Microsoft Virtual PC application. I already have a guest system set up, although there's no operating system installed, so let's go ahead and start up the guest so we can begin the installation of Windows XP. Since there's no operating system, the setup program will begin. If you have a hard disk subsystem, such as a, uh, a SCSI-based one, you'll probably need to provide Windows XP with the appropriate driver. So if you do have those drivers, hit F6 so that you can provide Windows XP with the appropriate drivers to be able to locate the uh, subsystem. Otherwise, just let the uh, setup continue. You'll notice that setup is loading the appropriate files. Okay, once the files have been loaded, we'll reach the welcome, uh, the welcome screen. At this point, you can either hit enter to continue the installation of Windows XP, or if you're doing a repair, you can hit the R key on the keyboard. Otherwise, you can hit F3 to cancel. Let's go ahead and hit the enter key. Okay, we've reached the point where Windows XP has uh, provided us with a license agreement. You can hit the page down to read over the license. Once you've read the license, you can go ahead and hit F8 to agree to it. Okay, in this case, Windows XP found uh, some unpartitioned disk space. Um, I have a uh, 2 gigabyte hard drive uh, for this demo, um, and I've been prompted for three options. The first one is to, to set up Windows XP um, on the default uh, partition space there. So if I hit enter, it'll just take the entire 2 gigs of space for the Windows installation. However, if I, if I like to create several partitions or if I want to create a smaller partition just for the installation, I can hit C and, and make those uh, custom changes. If there are any uh, partitions that are currently listed and you would like deleted, you can use the D command at that time. So let's go ahead and press enter to uh, take the default 2 gigabyte partition. Okay, I've been prompted with some uh, different options. Um, I can either format this 2 gigabyte partition either using NTFS or FAT, quick or full format. Uh, for the purposes of the demo, I'm going to do a quick format, and I would highly recommend that you always choose the NTFS file system. The only time that you'd probably want to do a FAT file system um, is when you need to, uh, for instance, set up a multi-boot system, which in these days is not very common anymore, thanks, thanks to a virtual PC. Um, but for the most part, NTFS is going to be the, uh, the choice you're always going to take. Okay, since I've chosen uh, to format using NTFS, um, the setup process continues by formatting the drive. Again, I chose the quick format option. I'm not interested in looking for any errors on the disk. Um, for the purposes of this demo, um, the quick format is, is uh, acceptable. Okay, so now the next step is for uh, Windows XP to copy the uh, files needed to uh, continue the setup process in the next phase. Um, this this uh, section of the installation can take some time depending on the speed of your hard drive and computer. Okay, it appears that setup has finished copying the files, and it's finalizing this uh, phase of the installation process. In a few seconds or so, um, the setup program will prompt you to restart the computer, so the next phase can begin. And here we go. The computer's going to restart in 15 seconds. You can hit enter to uh, force the restart.
again depending on the speed of your computer um, the setup could take approximately 30 to 45 minutes at this point as the uh, setup continues Windows is starting to install the devices that it's finding through plug and play okay we've now reached a point in the uh, setup process where we need to provide Windows XP with some information let's go ahead and um, click next because we are not going to change here or customize any of the regional or language uh, settings at this point you just need to simply put your name and organization information click next and provide Windows with the uh, appropriate product key alright after you've entered the product key go ahead and give the computer a, a, a name or you can choose the default name that's uh, been given to the computer and it's probably a good idea to type in a, um, an administrator password so you don't have a blank password on the administrator account click next make sure the date and time is correct and also your um, time zone settings next to continue okay we've reached the uh, point in the installation where uh, we need to provide some networking settings um, for this demonstration I'll just go ahead and accept the typical settings which will install the client for Microsoft Networks file and print sharing and also the TCP, TCP IP protocol click hit next to continue at this time you have an option to either join the computer to a work group or make it a part of a member of the domain um, for this demonstration we're just going to um, allow the computer to join a work group click next and the setup process continues okay the uh, setup process is completed um, Windows will be loading for the first time Okay, click OK to allow Windows to improve the visual uh, elements. Okay, since this is the first time that we have started win the new Windows installation, um, we go, we'll need to go through a, a series of a uh, couple of questions. So let's go ahead and click Next. it's probably a good idea to set up uh, automatic updates on your computer so we're gonna go ahead and, and go with the recommended setting click next and I'll also register at a later time so let's click no and hit next okay we'll just need to set up a uh, an initial account for myself I'll hit next and that's it. I'll click finish. Okay, and Windows has loaded our initial desktop. And that is the end of this demonstration of installing Windows XP.